OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. We are going to do Assignment Starter. Wow, this just got added to the ebook that you all have the link to, maybe, uh, that is here. So there's the link. Uh, you want, if you've got two windows open, right, go to the browser window and type in https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash slides, the number two and a V. Um, I tried every combination I could. I couldn't get slides to view, so slides to V was <laughs> what it became. All right. So go ahead and open that handout. And we've done a lot. We've covered a lot. Uh, just a quick recap. This is me. Um, and this is how to use the deck. So each line within the TOC, which is the table of contents, goes directly to that area or that area of instruction or that page of instruction, however you want to word it. Okay. Uh, so here's the TOC. So if I wanted to get some ideas for use, I could click on the link ideas for use and it will take me right to that page. Okay. On each page, there's also a TOC button at the top right hand corner. When you click on that, it will take you back to the TOC. Okay. Alrighty, so someone wants me to type the link in, and it, somebody might have already put it in the chat, but I will put this. It's in the chat. Okay, there. It's in the Q&A too, Fatima. Okay. Alrighty, so that's how you use this deck, right? You, you look at, oh, oh, I don't know how to mask images. So you go to that page, and then you can come back using the TOC button. Now, what we're going to be doing today, because there was a lot of requests for this, um, on the evaluation. So we have um, what's called an assignment starter. So if you're on this handout, uh, go to the table of contents, page six. It's the second page of the table of contents. And then slide 64, you could actually go to slide 64 if you want, or you can select the assignment starter link in the TOC, click it, and here we go. So we have another handout for you. Uh, the assignment starter is what we're going to be working on today. And it's kind of, <laughs> Elise is going to laugh at me when she sees it. Um, here's the link right here, bit.ly slide starters. So there's only one S, slide starters. Okay. And if I can, yeah, I'm going to copy that. And I will put that, oh, I can't put it in the Q&A because I want to ask a question. So um, question is on page five and six, or a uh, question, <laughs> TOC is on page five or six. <laughs> oh, read the word. <laughs> okay, um, the TOC, here we go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, the fifth slide. So you might have to hit your arrow key five times. Um, or you could also on that first slide, when you open up the handout, there's a TOC button on it. Boom. Takes you right to it. So you can skip all that other crap <clears throat> stuff. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, again, I went to slide six of the TOC and I hit assignment starter. And that's, this is basically what we're going to be doing today. So what I need you to do is actually make a copy of this. Okay, um, you're going to open up the link. It should open up for you. Um, I'm going to check to see. Yeah, we got a bunch of people in here. That's good. Now, when you're here, don't write on it. You can't, but don't even try. So once you're on the assignment starters, you need to go to file, make a copy, entire presentation file make a copy entire presentation when you hit entire presentation 
you're going to get a little window that pops up that says copy of assignment starters, right? I want you to name this start kit or starter kit hyphen your last name. Start kit or starter kit, whichever you prefer, a hyphen and then your last name. And if you look at the Zoom window, I've done exactly that. Uh, don't worry about any of the uh, check boxes. There are no speaker notes, so don't worry about that. Uh, there are no comments, so don't worry about that. And I don't want you to share it with the same people. I want this to be yours. You're not sharing it with anybody. Okay, so starter kit with your last name and then say okay. When you do that, it will open up in a new tab. You've got your own. It's going to take a minute, so be patient. All right, so we're going to wait just a little bit. And then after you do that, go ahead and close the tab that has my, uh, my title, Assignment Starters, on it. You can close it now because you have your own copy, right? You've got your own copy. You're ready to rock and roll. Okay? All right, I see a couple of people have closed this. And you, see, I can see up at the top of my screen, I can see we've got anonymous buffalo, we've got anonymous armadillo, alligator, aurochs. Melinda, can you Cormorant. go over that one more time from I will. the presentation? Yes, okay. Um, so I can see as you're coming in and as you're going away. So here we go. On the TOC, you're gonna see a link. And you can actually click that link. If you're on the ebook, you can click this link right here and it will open up for you. Okay. Or you can use this little bulleted item over here. This is also a link. So you can use that instead of typing it. Once the presentation opens like this, okay, you'll, you, you should open to the first page and it'll have the, the, uh, the bitly up at the top and it says assignment starters for slides. Okay. Once you get here, you're going to go to file. Go to the file menu, it's right underneath the title. You're going to make a copy. You're not gonna download, you're gonna make a copy. And you're gonna make a copy of the entire presentation. So you click that. What will come up is a new title. It says copy of assignment starters. I want you to name this start kit or starter kit hyphen your last name. This will be saved into your drive, <clears throat> not my drive, your drive, okay? Not anybody else's drive. This is yours, okay? Don't worry about any of the check boxes below. They're not going to do anything for you. You can check them if you want, but <laughs> they're not going to do anything for you. Uh, and then say, okay. When you say, okay, this presentation will be copied and it will open up in a new tab. It'll open up in a new tab for you, okay? You have to allow the magic to happen. Yeah, just breathe a little bit. Don't start clicking on things. And when I want it now, I want it now. No, don't do that, okay? Just slow down, wait for the, the thing, the little wheels to stop grinding. And eventually all of the images and everything will be populated. Boom, you'll have your own copy. When that happens, um, you can close my presentation, assignment starters. Uh, Catherine, I'm not showing the TOC anymore. If you don't see it, it's because uh, on the Zoom, if you don't see it because I'm not showing it, but on your handout, it might be that you're not seeing it because you opened up a new presentation. You've got the assignment starters open and there is no TOC on that yet. So the TOC is on the ebook. The ebook is located at slides to view with bit.ly in front of it. Okay, that's been posted in the chat. So bit.ly slash slides to V. All right, DTOC, we went to slide six. We went to assignment starter. When you get that slide open, you're going to click on the open link or the bit.ly slide starters and bullet A. It will open up for you. You're gonna file make a copy, entire presentation. You're going to name it, start kit with your last name or starter kit with your last name. 
it will open up in a new tab. Once it totally opens up in a new tab, you're going to close my presentation that's titled Assignment Starters, and you should still have open yours, which will be named Starter Kit hyphen your last name. All right, so I see we've still got 21 people that have this open. Again, if you want to keep it open, that's fine. I don't care. Um, but just make sure you, you, when you start, when we start doing things, you're not going to be able to do anything to this, to my presentation. I've shared it, but I'm not allowing you to edit this. You can view it, which means you can make a copy, but you can't type on it. All right. You can only type on yours. So you have to make a copy if you want to follow along. And if you just want to watch, you just want to make a copy and then watch. That's okay too. I'm good with that. We're cool. All right. Okay. Elisa, do you think I can move on? Are we good? Yeah, looks good. Okay. All righty. Um, the second slide on this starter kit, you're going to see a table of contents that is not linked. Well, what good is that? Well, it's because you're going to link your own. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're going to link your own. Now on yours, on yours, everyone click where it says video formatting. Just click in that word somewhere or in those words. All right, and I want you to hit your enter key. So you get another bulleted or another bullet, bullet, another bulleted item. Yeah, another bullet. Okay. And I want you to type the word chart. That's it. We've just added something to the table of contents. We've added the word chart. So how did I do that? I went to the second slide. I went to the end of video formatting, the word video formatting or the phrase, whatever you want it. I hit the enter key on my uh, keyboard and I typed the word chart. Okay. All right. So now we've added the word chart. When you're creating a table of contents, you need to make sure that all of the slides are represented on your table of contents. <laughs> and I just added one called chart this morning. So you've all now have the, uh, the full table of contents, but again, it's not linked. We're going to do that later. The next thing we're going to do is actually create a book layout because this, for whatever reason, people went, oh, I love this book layout. So we're going to, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to walk through exactly what to do so that you have a layout called book. Okay. You're going to have a layout called book. This one on slide three, this is just a picture of the book that we're about to create. All right. Okay. Everybody ready? This is going to be so much fun. Okay. Everyone with me? Here we go. Everyone go to view. Go to the view menu. All right. You've clicked on view and you're going to go down to where it says master. View, master. Click master. All right. So far, so good. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. Now I already have it. Ha, ha, ha. But all the way at the bottom of your page, you should see a blank. Okay, it's underneath the green um, percent layout. So I have to scroll down, but there's a blank page there. We have the book too. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I forgot to delete it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, right. Melinda. You're welcome. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, but we're going to do this anyway. <laughs> you all, <laughs> all right. You need to know how to do this. All right. You need to see the process. Okay? Can you get to master's one more time, please? Yes. All right. So from my slide stack, darn it. I knew there was something I forgot to do. <laughs> all right. So you've got your slide open, uh, your, your starter kit. Uh, you're going to go to view master. Okay, that's all it is. View master. Okay, once you're at view master, I want you to scroll all the way down. Okay, just ignore that blue one down at the bottom. All right, just ignore it. I know some of you are chuckling. I'm going to keep this one. Me, me, me. You can't, you can't touch me. Yeah, you can keep it. But I want you to know how, how to do this. We're going to do another, we'll do another color. Okay, um, so click on the blank layout. 
So at the top, you should see streamline, editing streamline, hyphen blank. Okay. All right. Now, the table, of the, um, the book layout has a line through it. And it's a vertical line. It's absolutely straight vertical line. So up at the top of your, on your toolbar, you should be able to, Olga, I don't know where you're at. So if you're not with us, you need to go to view, master, scroll all the way down and hit that blank layout in the black bar on the, on the left. You're gonna see all of your slides on the far left. Then you're gonna see, stop taking notes. The notes are there, stop taking notes. Uh, you're gonna see your slides in the far left. You're gonna see a black bar with all of the layouts. And in that black bar, you wanna hit the, it looks like a blank and then that's what it's called, it's a blank, okay? All right, now up at the top of um, that, uh, area, you're going to see wor a word like background, right? And then to the left of that, you're going to see a little comment button to the left of that. Oh, there it is. We want to select a line. You want the first one, just a line. Okay. So select line and then <clears throat> my line's not selecting. There we go. When you, um, get your mouse over to the blank area of the, uh, the slide, you should see a T, uh, a plus sign, crosshairs, whatever you wanna call it. Everyone hold down your shift key and then draw a line going straight down the page and then let it go. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna go up to the line tool. I'm gonna select the line when I select a line, my mouse, my cursor turns into a plus sign. I'm going to hold down my shift key. Then I'm going to click the left button on my mouse and draw a line all the way down. Why am I holding down the shift key? Because that makes it absolutely zero degrees, 90 degrees, whatever. Um, it makes it exactly straight. Otherwise, you could be drawing a line like that. We don't want that. We don't want it to be an angle, all right? Okay, so you've got a line drawn. Does it go the entire length of the page up and down? Well, if you were really good with your mouse, yeah, it does. If it doesn't, you can select the line. You'll see a little blue dot at the top or, and, or at the bottom, and then you can hold down your shift key and then make it the full length of the layout. So it's going all the way up and all the way down. If the line disappears when you're releasing your shift key, I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. Um, line, I'm holding down my shift key. Let go of your mouse first and then let go of the shift key. How's that? Just trying to figure out how I do it. All right, so the line, I have a line drawn down the center. Yeah, um, I'm gonna keep it Right now it's at one point. So if you look at the pencil tool, that is your line color option. So everyone make it, hmm, this dark, underneath the orange button, I want you to go all the way down to the bottom of the orange, uh, uh, what, the orange line, um, and do dark orange three, okay? So we've got a dark orange button. So I clicked on the line, I went to the pencil tool and did dark orange three. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna select that line again. And here's where it starts getting fun. You're going to select the format options button. Up at the top of your screen, you should see format options. It's between colors and comment, right? So click on format options. A window is going to open up. A panel is going to open up on the right-hand side. So we've got size and rotation, position, drop shadow, and reflection. Yeah? All right. Make sure your line is selected. You should see those two little blue dots up, in, up at the top and down at the bottom. Now, select the drop shadow checkbox. It doesn't gonna, it's not going to look like it did anything, but we're going to make it look better. 
select the arrow next to drop shadow the one the arrow next to the the words drop shadow okay so we've got the checkbox selected and we've got the arrow so that we can see all the settings for the drop shadow yeah now this is going to sound really weird but the color right now is black the color is black i want you to make it pink okay and then everybody just wait because i'm going to revisit all of that what i just did <laughs> okay so here we go i've drawn a line i drew a line down the middle of my layout i made that line a color by using the pencil tool okay i used the pencil tool and i went all the way down to the bottom of the orange and i've got the uh, dark orange three okay there we go. So now my line has a color. Uh, next to the pencil, I don't know if I covered this, so everyone look real quick. Uh, next to the line color tool, there's a line weight tool. You want to make sure it's just one pixel, one PX. All right. Now with the line selected, remember, select the line, and then you will see format options. If the line is not selected, you don't see format options. You have to have something selected before you can format anything. So select the line, go to format options, the panel will open. Select the checkbox next to drop shadow. And then make the color pink. This will make sense in a minute. We need to know, we want the shadow to be to the exact right of the line, right? And right now, I can't see where the shadow is because it's dark, all right? And it's also a little transparent. So what I do is I make it pink because that sticks out like a th sore thumb. Sore thumb? Michelle, you need to look at the very top of your um, page. Format options will be there if you've selected the line. Um, it, there's no way it can't be. And look to the far right. It also, it might not be, it, you, you might be right. It might not be there if, they're, if you're using a tablet. I'm not sure where it appears when you're using a tablet. All right, so the pink. Um, everyone look at, we've got transparency, we've got angle, we've got distance, we've got blur radius. So on each of those settings, you're going to see just barely a little square um, on the distance is what we want right now. These squares are really, really hard to see, but you know that you've got it when your cursor turns into the north, south, east, west. Okay. Michelle, I'm on a Mac too. I am. I'm using a Mac. All right. So when you select the, the, uh, the line, format options appears at the top of my screen. Make sure that line is selected. That's all I... I don't know that it should be there. Okay. All right. Now on the distance of the pink line or the shadow, we're going to drag the distance over a little bit, maybe to about 11, 12. Okay. And still we can barely see the line. I'm just starting to see it a little bit. All right. What you need to do is um, take the transparency. There we go. See, I, I, I got rid of the blur, okay? So the blur, so after you get the distance away, like maybe a 12 or a 15, okay, then you'll be able to see the line if the blur radius is like zero, all right? The blur, go ahead and play with blur just to see what it does for a little bit. Play with that blur line. I'm turning mine to zero, and then I see the line. I see a pink line because that's the shadow, okay? And then as I drag it over to the right, it blurs more and more and more to where I don't even see it, okay? The color option for the drop shadow, if you have the checkbox selected for drop shadow, hit the arrow next to drop shadow so that it's a down arrow, and then you'll see the color. It looks like a little black dot when it starts out, but when you click on that black dot, you should get, see all the color options. You don't have to make it pink, but it just makes it easier to see. Now, what I do from this point, usually the angle is something like this. Uh, it's set at like a 45. I want it to be in line with the line. 
I want it to be in line with, with the light. We're creating a shadow so that it looks like the book is open. We're making it look like it's open. All right. So I'm going to maneuver my angle to where it's at about, and I think I put the settings on the slide. I've got my line selected, not the shadow. You can't select the shadow. You have to select the line, go to format options, and we want the transparency of the shadow to be 50. Um, so we're going to drag the little square under transparency and you're going to try and get it to 50. Now this gets a little weird because you're going back and forth. Well, there's 51. Oh, there's 48. Oh, there's, oh, I almost saw 50. So when you get it on a number, right now I know I'm at 47. I know I'm at 47. I know that this little box is selected because I've got the little crosshairs on it. I know I'm at 47. I'm going to hit my key my right arrow key on my keyboard. One, two, three. There, I'm at 50. That's one cool thing about the, um, the tools on the format options. You can't really see or you can't actually nudge unless you use the arrow keys. So I'm going to show you that again. Transparency, I'm going to drag it as far as I can, I'm going to try and get 50, but nope, 50 is just not coming to me. Right now, it's set, it looks like it's at 52. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to go nudge 51, nudge 50. I want the transparency to be 50. Okay. The angle for this line is going to be 215. <laughs> All right. So we're going to drag our angle. Oh, there's 263, oh, 251. Two, oh, 220, ah, oh, look at that, I got 215, okay? If I didn't, if it was at like 211, right, 211, 12, I hit my arrow key, 13, arrow key, 14, and 15, okay? You notice what happened to the shadow? It's now on the left-hand side of the line, okay? Uh, now we want our distance, to be six. So I'm going to drag my little distance. And if, you know, it's on eight, seven, six. I use my arrow keys. And then we want the blur radius to be five. Boom. Now, I'm going to do something. I'd like everyone to put down your mousies and look really close. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the, I, I zoomed in, all right, I selected this line, the line is selected, I'm going to change my drop shadow to orange, wow, you can't really see it all that well, <laughs> so we might have to change the distance a little bit, or the blur radius, maybe the blur is just a little, there we go, now it's starting to appear a little bit, so you're going to have to play with this a little bit. Okay, the settings that um, are on the handout um, on slide number three are the settings that I used, and it's probably a good thing I kept this here now. Boom. These are the settings for this book. So go ahead and go to that blue. I want you to see this so you can see how it works. Because do you notice I have two shadows on either side of the blue line? Right, because that way it looks kind of like a book, right? Because there's a shadow, and that's when, when you open up a book, we got a shadow down the center. How did I get a shadow on both sides of that one line? Well, the trick is there's two lines. There's two lines. So all that work you just did for that first line, I did it twice. Now, if you're looking at my... Um, the zoom window, you'll see that I just nudged the left line over a little bit so that you could see that there are two lines. They're laying on top of one another. They're exactly aligned, but the shadows are in different positions. So there's line one and there's line two. Now this is probably blowing some of you away. 
All right, and I understand that, but again, this was something that was requested on the evaluations. I want the ebook, I want the ebook. Well, this is how the layout was created. Two lines, well, actually one line was created. Okay, one line is created. I'm gonna go back to that blank slide that I was, we were working on. So here's that first line. I've already done all the work. The only thing that needs to change is the angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this line, Control C, or you can select the line and go to Edit Copy, right? And then I'm gonna paste it. Here's the second line. The only thing I have to change is the angle of the shadow. So whatever it's supposed to be, and I can't remember. It's on, the, it's on slide three. Now these lines um, aren't showing up all that great. So again, you're gonna have to play with it. Um, I might wanna make them maybe a little darker yellow or orange so that they appear better. I might want to make the blur radius a little less. Uh, maybe the distance needs to come up. But when I'm finished getting the, the shadowing exactly the way I want it, I'm going to put one line on top of the other. And then you get that line down the center of the page with shadows on either side. And I believe, yeah. Yeah, I just picked the wrong color. Dark orange is a bad color for shadowing. <laughs> lines all right something else you could do you could also make the uh the line going down the center um two points instead of one point now now i see the shadowing a little better so i selected both lines and then i went up to the line weight tool i'll make it three and now you can see you've got that dark line going down the center which is actually two lines it's just one on top of the other and then you have the shadow e either side Okay, so that is how the layout for the book was created. And that last, um, that last page there, that last layout, I should say, that last layout with the blue and the lines on it that I'm showing right now, there you go. You got it. So all you have to do now is change the color of the shadows. If you want your book to be green or yellow, or uh, maybe you want white pages with the dark line, so you would indeed use that um, black uh, color for the shadow. Um, so again, it's up to you. If you don't want the line to be so bright, uh, you would go to the line color tool, select the line, go to the line color tool, and then choose a lighter shade. Okay, and then it's not that pinstripe that's going down the page. So that this was, this is very, um, what, what's the word I want? Um, it, it was, it, it was a big deal. <laughs> okay. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but all of the instructions for how to do this are on that book layout slide that you have, uh, slide number three. Okay. And we actually did it. Um, if you were following along, the transparency levels, everything is listed right there. We actually did it. And I, I know there's probably going to be questions, but I'm going to ask you not to ask them. Okay. Come to office hours today at four o'clock or um, Thursday at 10, and then ask the questions about the book layout, because this is just like mind blowing. And it's really, really, um, it's hard. Okay, so come to one of the office hours, ask questions, or send me an email. Send me an email, and I'll uh, walk you through it. I'm even thinking about creating a video on just this to show you how to do it, to show everybody how to do it, okay? All right, I'm going to go to the next slide. This you're going to enjoy. Um, how, Sandra, all you have to do is copy and paste. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and go back to that master, okay? The second line. What I did is I created one line, right? Got that all done, ready to rock and roll. And then I went control C, let me delete, nah. control C and then control V. And then I got the second line, okay? Once I have the second line, I changed the shadow angle 
I change the angle of it. Everything else is exactly the same. It's the angle that's different. And then I place them exactly in the same spot. You use your, your shift key. Remember, use your shift key to get everything just nudged right. And then you've got one line on top of the other with a shadow on either side. So that should have answered your question. Copy and paste. It's a beautiful thing. Don't create the same image twice. Just make it once. Boom. Alrighty, now, image maps. Image maps are links, but they're pictures, okay? We all know what a link is, right? It's some words that when you click on it, it takes you some to a website or a web page, right? An image map is an area of a picture that when you click it, it opens the website or the web page. Most of the time, you're going to see image maps as transparent, so you don't even really see them. You're directed to them. This is really helpful for our students. Go to the orange area and click, right? We don't say the word button. We don't say the, the words. We go to the orange area and click. Now, if you're on this slide, if you're on slide four on your own handout, I want you to go to the exact center of the logo and click. Where does it go? That right there, that, in, that little circle in the middle, I can click anywhere in this big circle. It's not gonna take me anywhere. I have to go to the exact center of the circle as I was directed and that little circle, there's a transparent circle there that it was made a link. This little circle in the middle was made a link. And you don't see it. It has no line. It has no color. It's called an image map. Okay. Um, image maps are really, really great for directing people to things. Um, and you maybe you have one image and you've got five things in that image and you want people to go to five different areas. So you use an image map to, in order to do that. So let's go to the next slide, number five. So you've got a big image, right? So select, now first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this image, this entire image, a link. Okay, so that's, we're just making it a link. We're not making it an image map. We're making it the entire logo a link. So you click on the image, all right? Then you're going to hit Control K on your keyboard. Or if you want to do it another way, you select the image. And then you go up to your menu bar up at the top. You should see a little link tool, which is telling you insert link is Control or Command K. Okay, you're going to get the same little window that happens underneath the logo. It's asking you for the link. Okay, I want everyone to type for the link HTTPS colon slash slash OTAN.us. And if you type something different, I won't know about it. It's okay. Go ahead. So we've got a link there, and then we're going to hit the word apply. If you do not hit the word apply, it does not link. There we go, we hit apply. Now when you select that big logo, it will take you, as the owner, you have to click twice, but if your student's reviewing this, they could click on it and it would take them to the website. Just like that. So if you tell them, click the logo, there, it takes them to the O10 website or wherever you tell them to go to on the logo, okay? All right, now, on this image, there's already a transparent shape. Hint, hint. It's the orangish yellow area. Hint, hint. Now I want everyone to watch me first, please. Come on, put your mouses down. Look over here. I got gotcha. you. All right, I'm clicking where that orange area is and I'm dragging the shape off to the side. Right here, and then I'm going to put some a line around it so you see it, okay? This is the shape that was there in the yellow eye area. So if you click, go ahead, 
if you click in that yellow area on your own slide, you're going to see something has been selected. All right, this something could be, how do you get a logo onto my slide? You would copy and paste it, Francis. So you can take any logo, um, if it's a ping or a JPEG or anything on your desktop, you can just drag it onto your slide or you go to a website, um, screenshot, take a screenshot and then paste it into your, um, into your slide. I think we went over that uh, a couple, yeah, on the last, um, the last webinar. Okay, back to this image. This image I created by using a polyline tool which we're going to practice here in just a little bit. So don't, don't worry about it. Um, but I wanted you to see that this is a shape. Okay. Now it's not square. It's not rectangular, which is what we're used to seeing buttons in the shape of, but this is a button. This is a button. So when you click on it, you're able to create a link for it. Okay. So I'm going to put this back where I found it in my, orange area and now you can actually see it a little better because I have a line around it. I'm going to take that line out by going to my uh, pencil tool, the border color, and I'm going to make it transparent. You don't see it, but it's still there. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? So I'm going to click that area. All right, I'm going to go up to my link tool and according to the instructions, we're supposed to go to we're going to make this link go to www.otan.us slash training. Okay. Once you do that, you're going to hit apply. Now, what we've done is we've created the logo as a link. Ooh, I see a misspell. Uh. <laughs> okay. So everyone correct the word transparent on bullet number four when you're on slide number five. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. So right here is my transparent shape. And right here is my logo. This is a link. The, the entire logo is a link. But if I wanted someone to go to a specific page on the OTAN site and I wanted them to go to training, I could create an image map within that logo. Boom! It goes right there. How cool is that? That is an image map. All right, a little more practice because next you're going to create an image map on slide six. Everyone get to slide six. Rule one. Rule one. Complete sentence must include a noun and a verb. The bird flew. Okay. So for rule one, I want to um, give my students a little more uh, information. Uh, so I'm going to tell them to select rule one to see a video. Select rule one to see a video. And it will take them to the video that I tell them to go to. All right. So here we go. Everyone follow along. We're all going to go to the shape tool. We're going to click shape. And then we're going to go to the word shapes. Redundant, isn't it? Uh, and we're going to select a rectangle. Okay, so everyone go to your shape tool, looks like a circle square, and then you're going to go to the shapes tool, and you're going to select a rectangle. You should get a crosshair, your cursor turns into a crosshair, and I want you to kind of go down to where the image is at that says grammar rules, and I want you to create a uh, rectangle by clicking, holding, and dragging over the words rule number one. And when you let go, you'll see that you've created a box over the words rule one. In order for this to be a workable uh, image map, we need to make it transparent and we need to take the lines away. Okay, so we could, we could make it a link right now or we can do it after the fact. It doesn't matter when you make it a link. Let's go ahead and make this transparent first. Okay, so uh, make sure your box is selected. We went to shapes, we got a rectangle, we drew a rectangle over the, the words rule number one. Our shape is selected. Now we're gonna go to the paint bucket where it says fill color and 
transparent. Select the word transparent. Now you can see the words rule number one. <gasps> Isn't that cool? But if you click off of your box, everyone click off of your box. Just click off to the side somewhere. You should see it's selecting the entire box, not just rule number one. Okay, you need to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on, Sandra. Um, so when you, let me, let me back up a little bit. So here's my box, right? If you're, if the entire image is being selected, it means you, you've not selected your box. Okay, you need to click where you have created your box. So click that little box there that, that you created. Okay, if, if it looks like the, all the handles are going around where it says grammar rules, then you need to move your mouse down and click the box that you created, not the image. All right, so we've got the box selected. We're gonna go up to the paint bucket. We're gonna click transparent. Now we wanna get rid of the line as well. So you're gonna go next to the paint bucket with the box still selected, you're gonna go next to the paint bucket and click border color and then transparent. Okay, now we can't tell that it's there, can we? But we know it's there because we put it there. We just made it transparent. It's still there. Click where it says rule one and you will see the little box represented by all those uh, little squares going around it. That means the box is there. Now we can make it a link. All right, now I've, I went ahead and put a link in here for you. You can copy, it's where it says HTTPS www YouTube. You can copy that, that link or you can create your own link if you want. It doesn't matter. I've copied the link uh, with instruction number three. I'm gonna go back to that little box. I click on where it says rule number one, the box is on top. So I click where it says rule number one I'm gonna to go to my link tool and I'm going to paste the URL for YouTube and hit apply. All right, now when I select that image map, I should see the link appear and I could even test it out, making sure that it works. And education has changed and now the classroom experience. Okay. enough test. Make sense? So we created a box around a specific area on an image, right? We selected that box. We made sure that it was transparent. We made sure that the border color was transparent. We created uh, or we inserted a link for it. Okay. Now I want everyone to make your own link for rule number two. If you don't have a website in mind that it could go to, um, use OTAN, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna do this. You can, you can follow along if you wish. I'm gonna go up to the shape tool. I'm going to select a rectangle. I'm going to draw a box around rule number two. And let go, there's the box. It doesn't have to be the exact size. Uh, you just want to get the most of the area where you think your students are going to be clicking. With the box selected, I'm going to go up to transparent or uh, the paint bucket rather and select transparent. And then I'm going to go to border color, make it transparent. Okay. With the box selected, I can see the handles all the way around just the box. I'm going to go to my link tool and I'm going to type a web address that I want people to go to for rule number two. Okay, now when my students go to rule one, they'll be going to a video. When they go to rule tool, road, road, <laughs> okay, sorry, mouth not working. Okay, when they go to rule two, they will go to wherever I send them. Rule three, same thing. It could be a handout. It could be a handout. It could be a video. It could be a form. It could be a test. It could be, I could send them anywhere. I just tell them, click on rule two. Boom. And then it goes there. Okay. So you can create shapes 
or you can make shapes an image map. Okay, remember an image map is a shape on top of an image that is mapped to something else. An image map is a shape put on top of an image that is mapped to something else. And when I say mapped, I mean it goes to another website. Okay. Well, Kim, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, delete that. Delete with the, vis the visible copied link over rule one. Just delete it. It sounds like you created a text box or, ah, I know what happened. I know what happened. A text box. Okay. All of your shapes, you can type in them. Okay. So I'm going to take this invisible shape and I'm going to drag it over here into a blank area. I'm going to drag that. There we go. All right. So here is my invisible shape, right? Um, and it's linked. It's linked to this, this video, but I can type here. I can make it rule five. But when I do that, or I could paste the entire link. So I think what happens, you selected the, the shape and you hit paste, okay? Instead of selecting the shape, going to the link tool, and then hit paste. So delete all of the text out of your box. Just select all of all that URL that you had there, select it all and hit delete, okay? Then select the shape, go to your link tool and then paste into the link, okay? So yeah, that's, it, that's a really good teaching moment, Ashley. Every shape that you create, it's clickable. So this one right here, I could type, anything. I mean, I could type the word CNN. Now I know it's going to go to OTAN, right? But um, you can type anything into a shape, whether it's transparent or not. So that's something to remember. So if, if that happens again, you know what to do, right? Just delete it. Make sure that you have the link tool selected and then paste the link in or type it in. Okay. Uh, slide seven. We're going to use the polyline. We're going to use the polyline tool. Now, this gets a little wonky. Image maps can be really close to one another, but you don't want them to overlap so much. Okay? So, in order to look closely at something, you need to watch me first. We have at our disposal two tools that we can use to go back and forth between zooming in and doing something. Uh, those two tools are called the zoom tool, all right, and your select tool. You have to go back and forth between the two. You can't zoom in and then automatically start or try and start typing something because you're still zooming. So I'm gonna show, see how my cursor, everyone look at my zoom window. My cursor is kind of yellowish, okay? And you can look at yours now. When you go to a slide, your cursor, your um, select tool should be kind of highlighted yellow. So that, that's how we know what tool we're using. Now, if I want to zoom in, which I'm going to want to do when I am making an image map, I hit the zoom tool and now I see that it is highlighted. And I'm going to zoom into the word diet, something I should be doing. <laughs> All right. After I zoom in to what is comfortable for me, I see that I still have that uh, magnifying glass with a plus sign. Well, I want to I do something else now, right? So I have to go back up to my screen and select the select tool. All right. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go up to the top of my screen. I'm going to hit the zoom tool. I'm going to, I notice that it turns into like a magnifying glass with a plus. I'm going to go hover over the word diet and zoom in eh, two clicks. I'm going to go back up to my select tool, which is to the right of the zoom tool. And now I can do things. 
All right, and what I want to do is I want to draw a shape around the word diet. Um, now I could probably use a, um, a rectangle that was tilted. I could, I could um, just kind of, I don't know, angle it a little bit. But I want to use the polyline tool. I want everyone to use the polyline tool. Polyline, always remember this, wherever you start, you must end. Everyone say that right now out loud to yourself. Wherever I start, I must end. Come on, say it out loud. Wherever I start, I must end. Just remember that for the polyline and the curve tool. These two tools underneath the line tool. So next to shapes, you'll see the line tools. Click on it. And you'll see you have line, arrow, elbow connector, curved connector, curve, and polyline. Wherever you start, you must end. All right, so from the line tool, I want everyone to select polyline. You should see your cursor turn into crosshairs. Yeah? Now, wherever you start, you must end. Click somewhere around the word diet, and then just start clicking and clicking. I click and drag, 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 click and drag. And I'm just drawing around the word diet. And you can see the line that you are creating. And once you hit the end, wherever you start, you must end. <gasps> There's the shape. Let me do that one more time. I'm going to go up to the line tool. I'm going to select polyline. Wherever I start, I must end. So I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to, I click, and then I drag a little bit. And then I click, and I drag a little bit. And I'm just drawing around the word diet, a shape that I want. Oops, see what happened? I didn't, I didn't complete my shape. So it just turned into a line. So that's why you want to start and end at the same time. So polyline doesn't do curves. No, Catherine, it doesn't. Curves do curves, but curves are a little harder to finesse. That's why I'm having you do a polyline. <laughs> a curve is like a rubber band gone bad. Um, and, and they're really cool. I mean, I use polylines or a curve tool for a lot of stuff, but the polyline is a little easier to use. So that's what we're going to do here. Yeah. All right. Yes, they are super tricky. All right. So I've got a polyline shape. Everyone should have a shape now around the word diet. Okay. And if you chose another word, that's fine too. Okay. It was just the one in the middle that was little cattywampus. That's why I chose it. All right. So I got now, what are we going to do? First person who's, who types it correctly in the chat wins something. I don't know what yet, but you'll win something. What do I do next? I select my polyline shape and now I have to... Mila says, move it. No, I'm not going to move it. <laughs> make you it, Jordana says, it. make it transparent. <gasps> there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Sandra, when you click and drag, it keeps highlighting the entire... Body. Oh, <laughs> okay. I don't know about... I, well, I, I don't know how to answer that question. So, yes, you want, I don't know who said the correct answer, but you win. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, job, you select your shape, go up to the paint bucket, and make it transparent. Now, you'll see the lines that you drew. Okay? Um, and then you go up to your border color, which is a pencil, and you make that transparent, too. Boom. Now, we can't see it, but we know it's there because when we select it, it um it it's got its borders around it um can't get to draw with polyline it makes lines coming from one point uh you might be in what's known as the badlands of line drawing so you want to make sure um michelle click on your select tool okay the little arrow next to the zoom window select that then go back to the line tool and hit polyline. I have had that happen. It's very rare um, when I'm drawing lines. So when you start with your crosshair, okay, um, you want to make sure that you, when you click, you click once, drag and click, drag and click, drag and click, drag and click. So what I think was happening with you was that you actually had another line uh, type drawn. 
Okay, so I just drew a shape around by bike. So if it ever looks, if, if you ever get to where it's like, man, this thing isn't working the way it should, um, go back and hit your select tool. Okay, it looks like a little cursor. Hit that and then reselect the the, uh, the polyline. Um, while we're while I drew this shape, uh, this link to the starter assignment. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hang on just a sec, everyone. When you're, um, go ahead and double click on your shapes, everybody. Double click on your shape. What happens? First person to answer gets the second prize. What happens when you double click on your shape? Do you notice anything? Suzanne says purple there's a line dots. around it. There's a line around it, but when you double click, there's little purple dots. There's little purple dots. So if perchance um, you had a cat jump up on your lap while you were creating your line or your shape and the shape turned into something, oh man, that's too big. You don't have to recreate it. You don't have to recreate it. Everyone draw a shape around the word bike everyone or walk you choose draw a, a polyline shape around wow sorry i'm in, i'm zoomed in so it's it's doing wonky things so draw another polyline shape around bike or the word walk i'm going to use the word bike and just for grins and giggles go into one of the other words so I'm choosing bike. I'm going to go into, I'm drawing the line so that it goes into nurse and into fun. Okay. All right. Now I've created this huge shape because my cat just jumped up onto my lap. And now ugh, do I have to recreate the shape? No. Everyone follow along. Click on the shape. Go to the um, paint bucket and select transparent. Okay, leave the line, leave the line, double click where the shape was, double click right in the middle of that big shape and those purple dots, drag them down, drag them down. See this way, I can get my image map exactly around the word that I want by dragging the polylines. The curve tool works the same way. It's a little bit like a whacked out rubber band though, so I don't <laughs> recommend you using it yet. Uh, practice with the polyline first. So how did I do that? I'm just done doing what I did. I took the transparency or put transparency on the shape. I double clicked, Right. If, if you don't like double clicking on a blank area, fine, double click on the line and you should see all these little purple dots and you can click and hold and drag those purple dots down and away from the other words as needed. This is also good practice for when you start making things like, oh, I don't know, uh, anything, a mailbox. Uh, what else have I created? Um, little icons for um, for different tools, okay? Now remember, an image map doesn't have to be exactly the same size and around the exact text, uh, but it has to be, you know, we don't want an image map so small like this that when we tell our students to click on the word bike, what if they click over here on the letter B? If you're looking at mine, I've got this little shape right in the middle of the word bike. Well, if they click on the letter B, nothing's gonna happen. So we wanna make sure that the shape is big enough around the word or the direction that it will make sense to the student when they click it. All right, so after we make a shape, we select it, we make it the paint bucket transparent, we border fill, we also make that transparent, boom. Now we have two image maps. We have, I have one around bike. You might've created one around walk. I also have one around diet. Now I can make those words go anywhere I want. So I could have them go to a health site or a diet site. Um, how do you make the cool word map? Oh, I used um, word, uh, cloud, word Cloud Generator. It's a free tool. It's a free app. 
um, to make this the the this thing that you're looking at. Um, right now, we're all probably zoomed in to our our graphic here. So remember the zoom tool. Use the arrow next to zoom and go back to 100%. Boom. So yeah, Michelle, I used a word cloud generator. Just type that in the Google and it should come up for you. It's pretty cool. And it's free. Okay, are we all at 100%? We're all looking at this. Um, go ahead and make the word diet go someplace if you wish, or the word bike. Um, and you're not actually making the word bike go anywhere. You're making the shape that you created, or the word um, walk, or the word diet. You're not making those words go anywhere. You're making the shape that you created on top of it go someplace. So that's the image map. Very helpful. It's another way to link our students to different things. I'm going to slide eight. Puzzle it out. Isn't this a really cool toolbox? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I drew that. Yes, I did. I drew it using a bunch of shapes. And for those of you that have already gone to the next slide, because I know some of you have, um, all of those shapes that I used to create this toolbox are on slide nine. This toolbox is actually a PNG. It's a ping image. So what I did is I drew the toolbox using a slides deck because I like the big canvas. I could have used draw, but meh. So I used the big canvas of the slides deck. I put all these shapes together. Then I took all of those shapes and I put them in a drawing, drawings.google.com. And then I downloaded it as a ping. And then I put it here. So I think, yeah, there it is. There's my ping on my desktop. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Okay, and I just dragged it from my desktop onto my slide. So after you create an image, you can make it a ping. Okay, there's reasons to do that. Lots of different reasons. Um, why do you want to make your own images? Because what if I don't want a red toolbox? What if I want a blue one? And I can't find a blue one that looks like this online to copy and paste. Well, then I make my own. So on slide nine, I'm going to give you about five minutes to recreate the toolbox on slide eight. All of the shapes are there. All of the shapes are there. There's even another toolbox that you can look at if you scroll over a little bit. So all you have to do, oh, by the way, there's the... <laughs> There's the line. <laughs> this, this slide was using the layout. Um, so if you have a line going down the center of your page, uh, that's your book layout that you created. So we could, you can change that layout to blank if you wish, the real blank, or you can go to the layout. Anyways, that's there. You'd have to go to the layout to take the line out or just draw the toolbox on the right-hand side. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to recreate this toolbox using these shapes. Um, I give you a hint, this is the top, okay? And I'm actually gonna take that line out of the center of my page by going to view, master. I'm gonna select the lines that are there and delete them. Then I'm gonna just click back on slide nine. There we go. So it's a little puzzle for you. This is all something, also something you could do with your students. You give them a bunch of shapes and tell them, okay, make this into whatever. Um, why do you want to create shapes or your own images? Well, I've already told you, you know, the color options, but you could also, this is a toolkit, right? You could make the drawers of the toolkit an image map or a link that goes to a specific site. So maybe one of the drawer, one of the drawers there, you could uh, make it go to your YouTube channel, right? That it's part of their toolkit. It's part of their learning toolkit. Um, you could also have it go to a, uh, your Google Classroom, right? So they always have this available. 
they always know where it's at or it's part of your your slides deck or however you want to do it if there's a lot of cool options to creating your own your own images you have control over them that's the main thing um quick hint on the uh the lock the hinges i should say there are little dots there that won't move unless you select them <laughs> okay so make sure remember i told you this um i think it was two sessions ago shift is your friend so if i click on an image and hold down my shift key and click and click i'm just holding down my shift key as i'm selecting everything that makes one of the hinges move all together as one if i didn't do that and i just selected you know i, I thought i was selecting one thing see how i'm going to move i selected something i don't even know what i selected <gasps> look there just goes part of it okay so it's up to you how do you do it um i kept the hinges together for you so select something and then hold down your shift key and select the other parts to it and that way you can get it to move all as one okay i'm going to give you another minute here anybody have their toolbox done already let me know in the q a just give me a yes i got my toolbox nobody's done it yet oh my goodness sandra good for you good deal Okay, so your next task, after you finish creating your uh, toolbox, is to change the color of it. Instead of red, make it blue. Um, for those of you that have finished early, um, select, I'm gonna select the top here. I'm gonna go to my tool bucket. Click on gradient, click on gradient, okay? And you're going to get a lot of cool options on gradient that gives the shadowing and whatever. oh good question how do i invert the handle that is a great question so i'm going to click on the handle and i'm going to put it up in, in in an area where i can see and when i click on the handle yes i did this on purpose there is a little circle underneath the um the handles when I select the hand, the, when I select the handle, the blue handles appear, right? And there's a little circle, and that is my rotation tool, my rotation. So if I click that little blue dot and hold down my shift key, it will go exactly 15 degrees. So I get back to zero, bing, and now it's reverted instead of inverted. Okay. There's another way to do this for those of you that finished early. You click on the handle. Hang on just a sec. I'm going to get it back to be inverted. You click on the handle, um, make sure it's selected, and then select format options. Right? And then you can look at the size and rotation. So right now I can see that it's rotated at 195 degrees. I selected the handle. I clicked on format options. I see the angle is 45 or 195 degrees. Um, so I can make that zero. Oops, helps if you type zero instead of an O. Boom. Okay. Yes, rotation is very cool. All right. Okay, and then we get the little handle things up here. All right, folks, you should have almost completed the toolbox. Another cool thing about doing this um, this toolbox, uh, let's say. On this image, let me zoom in, if you're looking. On the image, on the hinges, you can see that it's locked, right? Well, what if I don't want it locked? What if I, I want it to appear open? You can't do that on an image that you've copied from someone else, but you can on yours. So all you have to do, that once you have your hinges in place, is just drop that shape, this shape right here. It's a rectangle. It's actually a... a it's a transparent rectangle. All you have to do is drop it down, right? And then it looks like it's unlocked instead of locked. So, very cool. Alrighty. All right, 
I'm moving on. We're going to go to videos. We're going to format a video. So video formatting. It's really easy to add a video and I've shown this to you, but I did not show you the format options to a video. Okay, I also did not show you that you could resize it. So what I want everybody to do is go to slide 10. Go to slide 10. And then on bullet item number two, I want you to select the link. We're going to copy that link. HTTPS, YouTube, HRE, blah, 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 right? Select that and copy it. Select it and copy it. Then go up to the insert tool. And then select video. So we've got our link. We copied the link in number two. We went up to insert and then we select video. Okay. Um, now we're going to paste. Just paste the URL that you copied. Okay, dokie. Uh, you move the latches up and down, Olivia. Just use your um, air, your arrow keys up and down. Okay, now I've pasted the video link, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and hit the search button. All right. So I've got, here we go, Googling it. Google Drive in less than two minutes. So after you paste the link, hit the search button. The link is on uh, slide 10, Catherine. Slide 10. Okay, so on slide 10, number two, we've got the link right there. I'm going to copy it, Control C or Command C. I'm going to go up to Insert, Video. I paste the link, I hit the blue search tool, the little magnifying glass, okay, the video shows up in the list. I select it so that there's a blue highlight all the way around the description of the video, and then I get the select button down at the bottom left. If you don't see that blue select button, it means you haven't selected the video. So make sure you select the video, it's all highlighted blue, hit select, boom. And here's the video. Now the video will come in a certain size. You don't have to keep it that size. This is really a shape. Think of it as a shape, okay? So I can make it as big or as small as I wish. If I want it to be smaller in size, as the directions say, I can do that. I could even draw a shape around it so it has a little frame. Isn't that cool, okay? Or I could make it fill up the entire slide so that my students can see everything because I want them to stay on the slides deck. I don't want them to go to YouTube. I want them to watch it here, okay? So you can resize the video window, okay? All right, now, once you resize your YouTube or the video window, you should maybe, it opened up for you. Um, the format options might have opened up for you along with video playback. If it didn't, if all you see is something like this, you just have your video there and you don't see format options, guess what? It's just like a shape. You click the video and then you hit format options. Okay, you hit format options. Catherine, if, if you have the toolbox on slide nine, you should have the um, video on slide 10. <laughs> everyone got the same, I, everyone got the same slides. All right. Um, so again, you, you select the video, go to format options. If video playback didn't open up for you, um, video format options opens up like this. When you have format options on a video, you actually have video playback. Okay. If you didn't get the same video, don't worry about it. I don't know what happened, but it's okay. Um, what I wanted you to see is select video playback. The, you cannot play this video on your slide unless you're presenting, okay? So you cannot play the video on your slide unless you're presenting. Your students will be able to see it because you're gonna let them view it, right? 
but you won't be able to play it unless you're presenting, which kind of, um, if I don't want the video to start right at the beginning, if, if I want my students to start viewing the video at two minutes, and I want it to end at two minutes and 30 seconds, because I just want them to see that one little part of the video, I can do that. But I either need to know the timing or I need to use format options. So there's a play button in the format options. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit play on this. You should hear what is Google Live? Boom. That's where I want them to start. I want them to start exactly right here. I don't want them to see that first three or four seconds. Okay? So once I figure out exactly where I want it to start, if I have it stopped, if I stopped it exactly where I want them to start watching the video, I can click this little link here, use current time. Boom. Okay? And it looks like I might be off by one tenth of a second because I really want them to start at 0005. 0005. So I'm going to delete the six and put it in a five. Okay, so I hit the play button. Once I was in format, video playback, I hit the play button. I Fast forward it a little, or I played it a little bit. I didn't fast forward. I played it a little bit. I clicked on current time. That wasn't exactly where I wanted it to go, right? So I wanted it to start at five seconds. And since I already know, according to the instructions, where I want it to end, I want it to end at one minute and 17 seconds. That's where it will end. I also have some other options here. I can mute the audio. Maybe the audio isn't important. I don't want it's distracting. I just want them to see something, okay? So I could mute the audio on the video. You could also, as soon as the slide comes up, autoplay. So that's always a good thing to have so our students have to, don't have to hit the play button if they're, if they're watching it in a ebook form, okay? Once you do this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit present and then I'll answer the questions that have come up. When I hit play, it started right at five seconds okay and it will end by the way this was created in 2015 <laughs> by none other than using Powtoon never used Powtoon it's a pretty cool little video creator I'm just going to let it run so that you can see that it actually stops at 117. Oh my god. Yeah, the, the share button isn't blue anymore. All right, so it ended at 117, which was right in the middle of the ad. So I did that on purpose so that you would see that you can actually, um, you can make people watch exactly what you want, okay? What do you do if the YouTube video has ads? Well, you can't do a lot, Angela, um, except make your own videos. Uh, Lisa did a wonderful um the video series on Screencastify, Elisa? It was Screencastify, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But it was like a three-part series, and at the end of it, you have, um, you have a video created. And then there was a YouTube series as well where you create your own channel, and you upload your Screencastify, or you just – um, you could also link to videos that you've created in your Google Drive. So that's a way to get away from the video ads. Um, that, and yeah, create your own videos. So 
Uh, you're not always going to be able to get rid of the ads. Um, you'll have to, your students will have to wait for that skip ad. Okay. So, but then if you set the timing, Francis, um, let's say you, the ads are going to run for, let's say five seconds. Okay. And you want your students to start watching at two minutes. Okay. They have to, as soon as your students skip the ad, after three seconds, they're allowed to skip ad. Your video will start at two minutes. So I, it's kind of a, you have to watch the ads if you use somebody else's video, but if you use your own videos and we do have, um, those are posted on the OTAN site, how to create videos and how to do the, oops. I think there's one on YouTube where it shows you how to upload on YouTube um, and create your own channel. So, all right. And if you're having problems with it, office hours today at four o'clock, every Tuesday at four o'clock and office hours every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Okay. Last thing, actually, yeah, no, not the last thing. Charts. You can add a chart. So I'm on slide 11 of the assignment starter kit or starter kit hyphen your last name. Charts are a really cool tool to show visual data. Uh, maybe not so much for your students, or maybe it is for your students. Maybe you want to know how much time do you spend um, working with your kids, uh, going to class, doing something, something else. So you have them create a chart. And they don't have to use a spreadsheet because with slides, it's automatically created for them. When you create or use the insert tool, you're going to use the insert tool to create a chart. You've got a bunch of different options. You can create a bar, a column, a line, a pie. You can also add from sheets. If you already have a chart that's in a sheet, you could add it to your slides. Okay. But if you use the option to insert a bar chart, for example, I'm showing you this on slide 11. If you click on that um, graphic that shows a bar chart, you're going to see some tools in the top right hand corner. One of them is, uh, or actually I want you to click on the arrow. Okay. So click on the bar chart, then select the arrow next to it. And you're going to see a, an option to open source. Click that. As soon as you create a bar chart or a graph, a pie, or a, a line graph, whatever you do, it creates a sheet for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So after you open this, now you all have view rights, whatever rights I gave you on the slide, you have on this sheet. So you can't touch it. Okay. But you could on the next slide, um, you'll be making your own chart. So right here, let's look at this. I'm going to put this as team A. Team B, C, and we'll just leave that as team four, A, B, C, four, okay? Um, and I'm going to change some of the scores just so you see what, what happens here. See how this is updating live? Guess what? It's updating live on the sheet as well, okay? So when I go back to my slides, like, now this didn't happen on yours, this happened on mine. Um, it might have happened on yours too because you're actually connected to my sheet. You're, you, this sheet is mine and you're connected to it on slide 11. So do you see how now I have an update button because it still says team two, one, two, three, four. But as soon as I hit this update button, now it says team ABC4. All right. Fatima, I'm going to go over this. I am going to go over this. I wanted you to see it first, and then we're going to, we're actually going to do this. Okay. So charts are really powerful. They're connected to sheets. Google knows that when you ask for a chart, oh, they, they, they want some data. They want to put some data in here and, and do some stuff. So that is in line with sheets. So we're just going to create a sheet for you. Here you go. Boom. It's done. Really simple, quick, and easy way to do this. All right. Everyone go to slide 12. Okay, we're going to insert a blank slide after this one. Actually, you don't even have to do that. Don't do that. 
Um, you can create a blank slide after this one if you want, um, but you could actually insert the chart right on this slide where it says insert chart, <laughs> okay? And that's what I'm going to do so that I have the instructions right there. So I'm going to go up to my insert tool. I'm going to go down to the word chart. I am going to select a pie. Give it a minute and there we go. We have a pie chart. Now remember this is a shape so I can make it bigger. All right. And there I have team one, team two, team three, team four. All right. So this could be hours worked, hours played, hours exercised. Yeah, that would be the smallest one. Um, and um, hours sleeped. Sleeped? Slept? Napped? Okay, so I could change all of this. And how do I do that? Once you enter a chart, you're going to go to the arrow tool where it says linked options, and then you're going to open source. There we go. So once we open source, give it a minute. It's going to be, yeah, I've got this little word working. So if you've got a slow internet, just give it, give it a little time. Okay. Because it's inserting the data and it's inserting the, the graph. And then also you're going to have to scroll up. When you get, when your sheet opens, you're going to have to scroll up. All right. Um, once you scroll up, you should see where you have all the data that, that it put in there for you. So here, I'm going to put, um, what do we do, working, uh, fun, exercise, and sleep. Okay. Um, don't really need to change period one because it's not appearing on the graph. Points scored, I could change that to anything I want. So you just double click uh, time on tasks. Okay, so I've changed the title of this. Um, now I can change the number. So I, working, how many hours a day do I work? Yeah, it's about 24, <laughs> but we're gonna put, uh, I'll be normal in eight. That's not what I work, but okay. Fun, um, an hour a day, I'm gonna say one. Um, actually, we're gonna put two, cause this is fun. Uh, exercise, whew, in my dreams, one. <laughs> and sleep, in theory, uh, usually about six actually. So um, I guess I should bump up fun a little bit so I get my 24, yeah? Is this 10, 16? I don't know. I'm just going to put 12. I don't actually have that much fun, but there we go. So I've manipulated this chart on the sheet side. Now I'm going to go back to the tab where my slides were. And I do have an update button. It's going to show me the old data until I hit update. Then I have to wait for the magic. Boom. There we go. So this might not be something that you use um, with your students. I don't know, but it could be something that you use maybe in a staff meeting, um, you know, doing a presentation of some sort, you know, we spend this much time on this or we need that because of this, whatever. Um, lots of reasons to use sheets, sheets and charts. Um, so back on the, um, again, all of the things that I've just showed you today, we've gone over image maps. We've gone over um, just a simple link, right? We made a logo, a link. We've added charts. We've created, um, or you put together a puzzle, right? And you've got a tool chest now. Uh, you've done videos or inserted a video and now you know how to start and stop time, right? We've, that's a lot. And all of that can be put on a sheet. Um, Wordclouds.com, it could be, Michelle, I tell you what, since I've got a little time, we're going to go back to the table of contents, by the way. So what I did, word cloud generator, boom, boom. Free on cloud. Yeah, wordclouds.com. That's what I used. Okay. So that answers Michelle's question. Um, how did you get back to the slide from the sheet? Can you repeat that step? Sure, Darla. So when you're on your... Uh, your slide, or I'm sorry, when you're on your sheet, 
look up at the very top of your screen, you should see your starter kit hyphen last name tab. You can just click on the tab. So now you can go back and forth between the two tabs. Okay, you can close the sheet tab at any time. And if you want to see that open again, you go back to your slides and hit the arrow next to linked chart options and open source. So when you open the source, it's opening up the sheet, right? And you should have two tabs open right now. Adele, how do I change the percentage on the chart to plain numbers? Uh, you should attend the slides <laughs> series that we did, uh, which has been posted. Yes, you can do that. Um, right now it's doing percentages. What you do is you double click. There we go on the numbers and you have to look at the customization. So you have to tell it what you want. Um, I believe it's in customize. We've got pie slice yeah, legend. I'm not sure it's in here somewhere. Right now I'm in slides mode. That's why I'm it's in here somewhere. I know it is. It's in customize. Okay, that's 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 what I and, and you could force it by um, I think you go to format, you select the numbers and then format number instead of automatic, you're gonna make it number. Did that change it? Nope, sure didn't. Yeah, hmm. it's in there somewhere. Yeah, come to office hours and I'll be able to answer more fully. Cause right now, again, I'm in slides mode. So, so that's, that's the mindset I'm in. Um, back to, yes, table of contents. Okay, table of contents. Once you have created an ebook or you don't even have to call it an ebook. Once you've created a slides with a table of contents that um, you want your students to go to. Okay, maybe it's an assignment list. And all of your assignments are right here in slides or some of them might be in the slides and some of them might be on a website. Lots of different stuff that you can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create links to these exact pages in this slides deck. Does the previous webinars address linking a Google form to this type of charting? Uh, you cannot, you can add an image of a chart. Thomas, but you cannot add a sheet to a form. So the form data is going into the sheet. The form data in the sheet, yes, you can, you can view it in a chart form, definitely. But if you want to see something in another sheet and you want that information to go into a different form, no, you'd have to take a picture of the chart and then insert it. I think that answered your question. Um, back to the table of contents. Here we go. Everyone go to slide two. We're at table of contents. Um, we're gonna start backwards. I want everyone to select the word chart. Everyone select the word chart. And then go um, up to the link tool or hit control K on your keyboard. And then just relax a minute because you're not going to paste the link and you're not going to search. What you're going to do is underneath where your blinking cursor is located right now, your blinking, your blinking cursor, it says paste the link to, or search. Underneath that, you're going to see slides in this presentation and there's an arrow next to it. Click that. Scroll all the way down to the list, down the list and select slide 11. I know there's 12 slides, but go ahead and select slide 11, chart, click. And then you'll see slide 11 is selected um, at this, no, I'm not gonna go any further, <laughs> okay. So uh, the word text was selected, it's going to slide chart and I'm going to apply. And there we go. So you just created your first link. Now everyone go to video formatting. Select the entire line of text, video formatting. Hit control K on your keyboard. Select slides in this presentation, the arrow next to it, 
scroll all the way down until you see, oh, there it is, video formatting. It helps when your titles match the table of contents, so you don't have to guess which is which, okay? So video formatting, here we go. And once you do that, we're gonna hit apply. We're good? All right, now I want everyone to put down their mousies and I want you to look at my Zoom screen. Look at my Zoom screen. Everyone look at me. I'm the important one right now. I'm going to, don't do this. I want you to look because there's a reason, there's a reason I want you to look. I'm gonna select ebook layout. I'm gonna hit my link tool. I'm gonna to hit the slides in this next presentation. Now in my mind, I know that ebook layout is the next slide. It is the next slide. So why don't I just select next slide instead of scrolling all the way down where it says book layout? Why don't I do that? Because if I add a slide in the middle somewhere and I have this one going to the next slide, it's going to go to the wrong slide. It's going to go to the wrong slide. So I always select the title and the slide number that it has to go to. Right here where it says next slide, previous slide, first slide, and last slide, I never use those. Don't ever, if I find you using these, I'm gonna come hunt you down. Don't use these, okay? Always scroll down, look for the slide number. Do I title each slide? Heck yeah, except right here, slide nine, I didn't. <laughs> All right, so Angela, yes, normally I title each slide, okay? Um, but in, in all seriousness, do not use next, previous, first, or last, okay? So this ebook layout, I want it to go to slide three, right there, and I hit apply. Oh, look at that spammer. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't know my phone was on. Okay, so... I have created a link for ebook layout. It goes to slide three. Don't use next, last, previous, or whatever the other one was, okay? Go ahead and uh, finish this table of contents. So you've got the ebook layout, then you've got the next slide. What is slide nine? How did I miss that? Oh, that's where you're creating, create puzzle. Yeah, I didn't put a, um, I didn't put a title on here, do I? I should have. So slide nine is where you create the puzzle. So that will be the link um, on the table of contents, create puzzle. I'm gonna select that and that's actually slide nine. So I'm gonna hit the link tool. I'm gonna hit slides in this presentation. I'm gonna find slide nine, there it is, and apply, okay? Um, for me, the, um, the underlining of links, that lets our students know that it is a link, but if I tell people this is going to be a link, I don't like the underline. I really don't. It, it, I, for some reason, my eyes don't like it. So you don't have to have underlining if you don't want it. If you like the underlining, then by all means, leave it. Um, but what I do after I create my links is I select the text, then I hit the underline tool twice, boom. Now I, they're not underlined anymore. That did nothing to the link. There are still links. They're just not underlined anymore. Okay, again, that's a personal preference. I don't like underlines, so I don't do that. Once you create a link on the titles in TOC, can you change the wording? Sandra, I'm so glad you asked that question. Absolutely, yes, anytime you want. So if I decide that um, this, where it says create puzzle, and I want it to be called something else, I want it to be called create toolbox, right? So I'm going to click in the link and off to the side, you're gonna see where you can copy the link. You can edit the link, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, or you can remove the link. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do that. So I'm gonna edit the link. I clicked within the link. I'm gonna hit the pencil, edit link. And up at the top where it says create puzzle, Instead, I'm going to put create tool box. And then I apply, boom. Now naturally it became underlined again because Google's going, I want it 
underlined. <clears throat> and then I will just go back and say, I don't. Eh. So there we go. Okay. I win. So yes, you can take away, um, you can change the lettering. You can actually change the link that way too. Uh, you go back to the edit and you can take away slide nine and then put maybe slide 10 or 11, maybe you miscounted or because it wasn't titled, um, you put, you attached to the wrong slide. But yes, you do have to delete the link and then go back to slides and then go to the, rec, the, the correct slide. And I went back to slide nine again because that is the correct slide. All righty. Woot, woot. How do you get rid of the underline link? There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, you can select the entire text box, go up to the underline tool, which is up in your toolbar. You're going to have to select it twice. Okay. And then everything's, on un everything's not underlined anymore. Or you could select the text that is underlined, just the text, go up to the underline tool and click it. Boom. Okay. All righty. How do you add a title? You, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, I like to do things easy. <laughs> so I just happen to click on a title right now. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to scroll down to where I know there is no title. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to put uh, create toolbox. Okay, boom. So there, it's there. You could also, um, you could also go up to the T, the text box tool, click it, and then create your own text box, and then make it the same font size and the and the, the font and everything. I just find it easier to to. Um, I don't like recreating the wheel. So I know there's a title on the previous slide. I'll just go up here. I'll copy it. I'll paste it into the next one. Boom. I don't have to worry about formatting or anything. And it goes in exactly the same spot. Okay. All right, folks. Um, I hope you learned something here today. Um, we are actually finished with the Google Slides presentation. We've done a lot. We've done a lot. And remember, I'm going to put up this ebook uh, up here at the top. Boom. Slides 2V at the beginning okay so grab that link if you don't have it already and you can actually teach yourself how to use slides using this ebook and i hope to see you all at future webinars there are some more being um, plotted and planned so keep checking the otan site for new and um new and exciting webinars coming up <laughs>